Hallelujah. Um, yesterday, by the grace of the Lord, we started on Matthew chapter 7, verse 7, and we were able to have a look at um, the introductory aspect. So this morning, we go straight to what the Lord has for us. Remember, um, in these lessons, it's not like every... Um, aspect of it is being explored no not at all um those verses are what if you want to write on them you write on them every day for the rest of your lives if you want to speak if um you stay in and at the present in the presence of the lord he will minister more so we're just taking um the much we can for the 30 minutes 40 minutes we have but that is a mind filled with precious stones, gold. The Holy Spirit is still here to explore, to speak to us, to tell us more. But for the purpose of this teaching, we just take the much we can and then believe in the Lord to do the rest, the Holy Spirit to do the rest in our individual lives. Amen. So what are we talking about here? We are looking at acts, sick and uh, knock and it's all about prayers it's all about praying in faith believing it knowing who elohim is knowing who because our lord yeshua there when he says in verse 7 acts and you it shall be given to you it shall be given to you now who will we ask and he will give who on earth i'm sure your mind um is roaming now to everywhere it says oh i've asked a they didn't give me i've asked b they didn't give me i've looked for this and that but this is the lord yeshua saying ask who we are coming to that it shall be given to you sick and you shall find knock and it shall be opened unto you so don't give up three levels don't give up not at all don't press in that's what he's saying don't give up press in go for it refuse to take no for an answer deploy all you can actually while i was writing something just came to me like a light bulb and i wrote it down here and then it says i wrote down in my note it says ask beings Ask for what you can see. Then seek the inanimate, the things and also the things you cannot say. Seek them. But ask whoever. As long as you can say it, as long as the person can re respond, ask. The things you can't see, and it says, knock on hard objects. <laughs> Amen. I was just like, wow, Lord, thank you. It says, just keep on. So it means there's no barrier not at all nothing there is something for everything and by the time you explore all the three of them you would have met either if they are hard you knock on them if you can't see them look for them sick and then if you can go ahead and ask amen so and he says them um, ask look for it knock for it get all you can all the blessings the open doors the successes ministry peace joy salvation oh go for it you have asked go for the extra mile to seek and go further down to knock on the doors amazing so that you don't stop at one so the lord is trying to impress in us come down to all see it on and say look my children look i am the creator of heaven and earth i can do all things stop at nothing amen stop yes i know sometimes we look at things around us the world around us have put up limits and limitations to these barriers 
in so many ways to, to stop us from asking. And we grow with it. Oh, you can't ask for that. Oh, unfortunately. Oh, I'm afraid you can't get it. Oh, it's already been written. Oh, there is um, a, a form online. If you don't fill that form, you don't get it. That's the norm. So if you're unable to fill that form, you wouldn't want to ask because the rule says you must fill the form. And because I didn't fill the form, I didn't get it. Oh, the rule says that in the examination, I have to attempt all questions. And if I don't get them to the max, I'm not going to get. Therefore, I'm not going to ask. That is the rule. It's been set on concrete. The people of the world set things on concrete. But the creator of that concrete is saying to us this morning, I am able to break it because I have my own dynamite that I break them to pieces. So nothing is set on concrete. We have things like, um, oh, the word I was talking to my daughter this morning, and she said, Mom, what do I do? I just opened my computer. It was working when well, nothing I started. I came back in again, nothing on it. And the screen gone. Um, and it looks like it's a crack, not a physical crack. And I can't see well. And I said, what is going to say? I can't even take it out. What do I do? And I said to her, um, call the company tomorrow morning. Do you know what she said to me? First, she said, they, it is now out of warranty because I bought it at the beginning of year one. And I said to her, yes, it is out of warranty. Tomorrow morning, give them a call. Give the, you didn't buy from the shop, you bought straight from the company. They would know what has happened because you were using it and it didn't fall. There was no, um, um, had anything, no tension and it just, they will know. So go by faith, ask for it. So she was put off by warranty. I don't know how many people who have been put off by warranty of life. Oh, it's been set. It cannot, it says, ask. Ask. Oh, the car is only five years warranty and just five years, one month. Look at what, ask. Acts, brethren, and then layers of bureaucracy have been laid on us that people find it difficult to ask because you're going to need to go through this layer and layer and layer. Oh, before you talk to the president, oh, before you talk to the chief, you have to go through here, go through there, go through there. There is barrier, there is security, there's oh, you cannot ask sick. If you can't ask them sick, you find a way. Knock on that hard door. That's what the Lord is saying. Take away limitations. If you look at the level of progressing we put on ourselves, you go nowhere. Warranty, expiry date, you go nowhere. Limits, oh, you can't have this, you can't, and this is, you go nowhere. The Lord wants us to go by the eyes of faith. Amen. Having believing that with him all things are possible. Sometimes there are notices sent all around us. You get this notice prohibited, prohib and don't know about you. All around us is prohibited, prohibited, prohibited. And then those things are had hindered us from action. We remained a victim to our environment. So some people, because of that, they find it difficult to open their mouth. You know, settings of all kinds of barriers, this can put you up from asking even the physical things. I hope he's ministering to somebody today because and the things that go on in our mind is that this has been set, oh, this has been set, oh, the barrier is I must pay for my ticket, but you left your card at home. And here you are. You can't even go back because you get to work late. Go to the administrators. Tell them. Ask. They will open the barrier. And you go over. And they enter the train onto your journey. Brennan, that has happened to me several times. And all that goes into my brain is ask. And as I walk up there, the Lord knows your heart as a child of God. You're keeping chaste. You're truthful. Your life is pure. Nothing will be a barrier. What would be a barrier is when people are living in sin and they are not. Their sin will be a barrier to them. But you, who you, you are very honest 
the Lord knows. Go ahead. It's all been made for you. Amen. They are the, one, the benefits of being in Christ Jesus. If you don't take that benefit, then your righteousness will not benefit you. That's what the Lord has given to us. So remember, the hearts of the king, kings are in God's hand. Our father himself is not man and will answer all prayers. Psalm 91 verse 5, 15, sorry. The Bible says, he shall call upon me and I will answer him and I will be with him in trouble and I will deliver him and honor him. Promise. So, go. Acts. Amen. Amen. We are serving a beautiful father, compassionate one, not our earthly fathers, not the ones that who says, okay, yeah, have I don't, or we not give you and give another person. No, we are asking our benevolent who old. His mercies are new every morning. His love is overwhelming. Yesterday, when my husband said to me, Oh, um, the tongue, your tonga, that's what he calls tonga, your tonga, look at what is going on. And I didn't even know. And I was looking at the ex explosion of the underwater um, volcano and then the waves. And I said, Wow. And I was touched in my spirit, man. And I said, Right there, say, Lord, deliver. And then order. God is there to answer. He said, Call upon me at any time. And there I went on to look at the sat satellite images and looking at the wonders of our father. Wow! How did he allow these people, tiny little lands, and people are living on top of those big underwater or, or, um, mountains called island? We call them island, but these are just little patches. Underneath them are huge and they've lived there for hundreds of years. They're generations. Is God not amazing? Looking at the satellite view, looking at the, you know, the winds and then all those things. I say, Father, you are powerful. Who created all these things? Who named them by name? Is I Elohim. That's the one that says, ask me. Seek me. Knock, I will. So he can do all things. From the description and from what we saw, that little island should have been swept off. Everyone in it would have gone in one go. But our everlasting father still kept them and pushed the waters back again. Is that not amazing? Isaiah 58 verse 9. Thou, then thou shalt call, then shalt thou call, and the Lord shall answer. And thou shalt cry, and he shall say, I am here. If thou take away from the midst of thee the yoke, and put him forth of the finger, and speak in vanity, take those things out. They don't allow him to flourish. They don't allow him. His eyes is of pure eyes, uh, is, is so pure that he cannot behold or look down on iniquity. That's the only thing. Apart from that, he is there for us. Ever and ever. And Isaiah 65, 24 says, And it shall come to pass that before they call, I will answer. And then while they are yet speaking, I will hear. Amen. That's the one that says, Ask. It shall be given to you. But there are conditions. Let's go straight. Conditions. Those conditions are still all. What are they? Let's look at them. <clears throat> John 15 verse 7. The Bible says, if you abide in me, if you abide in me, whatsoever we ask. So you cannot be living in sin, living in compromise, doing your own thing and expecting to receive. It then means you didn't um, really give honor to the glory. It then means that you despise it. It's the Bible says, uh, if you abide in me. So those who are abiding in the Lord, when you call, he will answer. When you speak, when you ask, it shall be given. That's our Lord Jesus talking. And in John 14, 14, he says, if you ask anything in my name, if we ask in his name, 
he will hear us. There's no other name by which man is saved. No other name on the heavens. It's just through that name. So when we are asking, are we asking our right? The right way? In Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14, we ask also in humility, say, if my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves. We don't ask in pride, as we saw yesterday during the introduction, some of the things that stop us from asking pride. So when we humble ourselves in humility, knowing that, look, I cannot reach things by my own effort, but with him, all things are possible. When we seek him with all our heart, in Jeremiah 29, 13, he says, when you seek me with all your heart, you will find me. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse um, 29 also said the same thing. He says, we will find him. We will look at him. We says, but if from thanks thou shalt seek the Lord thy God, thou shalt find him. If thou seek him with all thy heart and with all thy soul. Amen. That's when we will find him. How? Again, Psalm 105 verse 4, seek the Lord and his strength. Seek, seek his face evermore at all times. Same in Isaiah 55 verse 6. When we seek while he may be found, not when it's too late. We're not when we want to turn him on and off like our electric switch. You turn off the light and switch it off at will. But when we remain in him, at all times, with all our heart, with all our soul, asking is one goal. Amen. It goes so quick and the, it, not anything wavering. Acts 17, 27, it says that they should seek the Lord if happily they might feel after him and find him, though he be not far from even any one of us. Our God is not far. Not at all. Will you ask? Will you go by your own way? Will you do what you want or ask him to lead and to guide and to show us what to do? Mark eleven twenty four. The Bible says, in we ask in faith, believing. You need to believe him. He's all. Do you believe? Or just, oh, they said, oh, that lady says I should ask. So I asked, do you believe? It goes with believing, strong faith that he's able. And before you can do that, you must know him. Amen. You can't just go to someone you don't know because you don't know what the response will be. But when you know, and what does that know in him? By coming to him through our Lord Jesus, having a personal relationship with him, seeking him at all times, enjoying fellowship with him. Keeping his commandment, First John chapter 3 and verse 22, he will only, we will only be found of him. And so when we have kept what he has asked us. So there are examples, I'm sure. Um, if I start talking about myself or those I know it will look like, but let's go to the scriptures. Examples of people who did all three levels. They didn't give up. Abraham did it when he was praying for Sodom. He carried on and then he asked for 50. He came down, removed another. He just died. He didn't get to even up to one. Knowing that, the, okay, uh, maybe it has not been written by then. But the law says, I look for a man. After Moses' case, he's now looking for one man. Abraham's case, sorry. He started looking for one man. As in Jeremiah chapter 23, verse 30, he says, I look for a man. Now, he says, ask even to the very least. Jacob did it. He held a man and said, I will not leave you unless you bless me. Even as he said, let me go. No, I must knock on this heart. I've asked. And I must seek, I must get on it. Moses did for the children of Israel in Deuteronomy chapter 9, 18. And so many places all through that great intercessor prayed all through the journey, asking the Lord. Sometimes he says, oh, I will not go. We will not go unless you go with me. Sometimes he says, take me and leave them. May the Lord 
Anyway, he's already with the Lord. Amen. The Syrophoenician woman. He, she didn't allow anything to deter. She asked. She didn't get. What she got was, oh, she was called, how can things for children be given to dogs? She said, well, um, I've asked, I've said, I'm going to knock. And then her knocking was the word of wisdom that came out from her and she got it. Amen. The early church did so. Oh no, we're not taking no for an answer. Peter has gone into prison and there's no coming out. They're going to execute him the next day. But we're not going to stop at this. We're going to knock on this hard door. We're going to ask. We're going to seek. We're going to ask the Lord. They continued in prayer. Peter was set up. So don't stop at anything. The Bible says of Elijah in James chapter 5, 17, he's like, he's a, a man of like passion, like you and I. He prayed that there be no rain and there was none for how many days? We can. I tell you, just, I'm not just talking to you. My spirit man is built up. I'm being revived in my own person right now. So much, so much more. And I hope you catch this revival. So, um... Remember, as we said, what stops it is if I regard iniquity in my heart. If your heart is not clean, Proverbs 66, 18. Stubbornness, Zechariah chapter 7, verse 13. He says, I cried, you did not hear me. When you will cry, I will not hear you. Zechariah 7, 13. So let's ask the Lord anything that makes us to disobey him, not listening when he's talking, take it off. If not, when you call him, he too will not hear because he's calling you. You are not paying attention. You're being distracted. You're doing other things. You're knocking it off. You're pushing it away. Remember your own difficult times. What all that things in James 1? Six to seven, when you are wavering, it says anybody who wavers, who doubts, who is unstable, cannot get anything from the Lord. Go by faith. Know it. Jesus said, ask. So I have no business doubting him. I have no business shake, be, you know, being shaken. I have to go in faith. James 4, 3, when we ask amiss, when we don't ask the right thing. Oh, you are asking the Lord, give me an airplane. And the Lord says, you don't even know how to ride a bike, not to talk of a motorbike. You don't own, you don't, can't even drive. And you want to fly a pilot, you want to fly an airplane. You're still living in one bedroom house. You don't even live in a big mansion with four, five acres of land that can pack the big, you don't even have a runway. No. And by the way, where are you going with the, with the airplane you're asking for? When we ask amiss, when we ask amiss, some people are saying, oh Lord, I want to get married, give me this person. The Lord says, you only seen that person on the surface. You don't know him. I'm the one that knows what you're seeing. He's a nice man, he's a nice lady, but I am the one that knows if you ever enter into that relationship, you'll be gone. Your faith will be squashed. You don't know. They are putting up faces. You are asking the Lord, oh, I need this, I need that. The Lord says, this job you are looking for, we take you to hell. This job you are looking for will not give you peace. This job will be tongues and briars and thistles. Let me give me yours. But some of us are still asking, Lord, I need it and I need it. Just like Samson. The parents said to him, ah, can't you see any other around us here? He said, he said, no, his eyes was with the Philistines. He died with him, them. His eyes were plucked out. He died with them. So when we ask amiss, find out what you're asking. Don't ask in greed. Don't ask amiss. You know, he says that we, when we ask to consume it in our own lust. No. So, so, um, in Proverbs 28, verse 9, uh, when we turn away our ears from the law, from the commandment, from what God wants us to do, then he will not. So what are we asking for, brethren? Bread and butter only? No, Hosea chapter 10, verse 12, we seek him until he reigns righteousness. There's more than bread and butter. Thank God for bread and butter. But there's another one. Until he reigns what? Righteousness on us. Until he does it. Brethren, these are the things we're seeking for. 
So a lot of people might have said, okay, let me go for that. At 17, 26, says, sorry, Daniel chapter 9, verse 3, how do we ask? But Daniel says, I set my face unto the Lord to seek him through prayers and supplication. We get it. We seek. We find through prayers. We do the physical mouth. We go for it. There are other ways. You go on your knees. Amen. We will get it. So for today, don't give up. Amen. Give a call. Search on the internet. Make an inquiry. Read about it. Go for it. We are not asking man. We are asking God. We can only say what we have heard but our father is not heard hard at hearing he will hear so it's all about exercising all liberties he had provided ask seek find enjoy all three use them at will break the yoke of limitations some people are too holy to ask or think they are disturbing god no 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 no. there's no way you can get one millionth of the blessings he had kept for us there's no way to enjoy all of them not to talk of so go for it this is part of the rest in him as we are resting in him this is actually the answer go for all three I am here. I'm your father. If you know how to give good things, you human beings who are hardened, who cannot, who do not forgive, who do not do, you count all those things and you create limitations and barrier. Know how to tweak what you have set on your own concrete. I am the everlasting father. So if you have done all, kept the faith, then enjoy the fruit of your labor. No more ignorance. At work, ask for that permission. Ask for that promotion. In coming by, and ask for extra packages. In the hospital, ask to get for an appointment. In your car, in car pricing, ask. The car I'm using now was £32,000. Leveled, they came down to 27. And the Lord says, What is in your hand? And I said, Say, ask. And I called the man and asked him the company. And I said to them, They said, Do you know you're asking for a demonstration car? You'll be the first owner, a new car. I said, Yeah, how much do you have? I told them. And then he says, I can't even let me tell the owner of the company, the manager. And they went to say, how can you ask for this car with this money? Are you joking? I said, no, sir, I'm not joking. This is what I have. So, well, that's not the cost. And then we stopped the conversation. Three weeks after, I picked up the phone and they called again. They said, this lady again? He says, yes. They put me through again. I says, you're asking again? But I told you, this is, I said, but this is my car you have it says you didn't buy the man got it he was like who how did you say i said it belongs to me as long as you don't give it to me in this price it will be there until you make up your mind i left him one week after and i called he says how much do you say you have and i told him say bring it that's how i got the car packed in front of the drive right now it shall be given to you by faith. It took a while, almost one month of back and forth, but I sought, I asked, sought, and I knocked on the hard door. The Lord knows what we have is not. He knows. The brethren have already come. Everybody says, Pastor Grace, and I looked at what everybody has put together, and I gave a call. With God, all things are possible. I can go on and on. I can go on and on. So ask for all the favors. Ask for that favor from today. Seek the Lord. You will find him. Knock on closed doors. Remember what I said? Ask what you can see. Seek for what you cannot see. And knock on any hard object. It will be what? Opened in ministry, ask the Lord for the riches of the Gentiles, ask the Lord for the souls of men, ask the Lord for that community, and the Lord ask the Lord for state. I'm asking the Lord for the world, brethren, and I'm putting it into action. His glory goes with us. I'm still seeking for anyone who will translate in any language. We've done nine, it's nothing. We've got five still pending, We're looking for those to read it, and before that, brethren, go for it. 
because I'm looking for all the souls of men because the world is my parish brethren let's go for the world let's go for the souls let's go through whatever the Lord has given to you go for it it's a year of rest so ask the simplest commandment ask seek knock you will have all three father we thank you we give you praise lord help us increase our faith open our eyes to know that you are the one we are asking you are with us and with you all things are possible lord take away every limitations of you know, faithlessness, doubt, unbelief, sin. Open our eyes to know who we are. The liberty and the joy and the provisions you have made in the new life. Help us, Lord, to take away the barriers of soiled relationship with you. Take away the limitations that man has set and the barriers and the glass ceilings, O oh Lord. But through the eyes of faith to look beyond Give us the grace to ask, seek, knock in prayers. Oh, give us the grace to remain importunate, Lord. Precious Father, thank you. In Yeshua Jesus' name we pray. Amen.